Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So it feels like it's been quite a bit of time since I've gotten to sit down and work on a sewing project, but I really am in the mood to make a spring dress this afternoon. It's a beautiful Saturday afternoon and it is starting to feel like spring. It's like that hint of spring weather. So I really want to make a fun new dress project. So I have some fabric and a pattern picked out. So let me show you what I'm thinking for this dress. Okay, I have you propped up on the windowsill, but please ignore my messy desk in the background. So the pattern that I want to use for today's project is this one from McCall's. This is number 7974. And I am wanting to work with view B right here. It's a little bit of a shorter dress with long sleeves. And the thing that drew me to this pattern specifically is the corset style waistline. This is something that I really love about a dress I recently got from Hill House. So I'm trying to kind of incorporate that style into my dress today. So we'll see how that goes because I really like the way that fits. And then for the fabric for this project, I'm very excited about this one. This is a quilting cotton from Rifle Paper Company that they sent me last year. And I just think the colors are so pretty and perfect for spring. It's this blue floral pattern with a white background. So I think this is going to be perfect. So I'm excited about that. And then just to add a little bit of interest, I went to Joanne Fabrics and I bought this entire roll of this crocheted lace trim because I really want to work with adding more trims to my projects this year. I'm starting to feel like when you make your own clothes, it's the trim and the little details like that that make all of the difference with it looking unique. So I'm excited to play around with this today. I think this will really add a nice springy summery element to it. So we'll see how that goes. So that's the plan for the project. I'm excited about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started cutting it out. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin Even with my eyes still closed I can feel it coming in Golden, golden. I'll follow only golden 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 things Mountain Laurel high fives for miles in spring. Rainbow trout and hummingbird. So I just made myself a little cup of coffee. I forgot I had this little Beatrix Potter teacup. Look how cute. If you're a Beatrix Potter fan like me, I got this at the Beatrix Potter house when I went there a few years ago. So this is bringing back some nice memories and I'm ready to get started sewing on this dress. So I think what I'm going to do is work in reverse just to kind of mix things up a little bit and start with the skirt. I normally start with the bodice, but I think today I'm going to start with the skirt. So I'm going to get all of my panels and start sewing those together. And then we'll see how far we get on this dress today. So I just gathered together all of the skirt pieces. So for this design, there are a lot of panels. There's the front and back pieces. The front is split down the center because it buttons in the front. And then there are four side panels, two for each side, so a front side and back side panel. So I'll make sure to stitch all of those together. There are also pockets, so that's exciting. So the first thing I'm going to do is just serge the edges of the pockets so that those are ready to sew in place. And then I can get started assembling the skirt. So what I have here now are the front and back sides of the skirt. And so I'm going to add my pocket pieces to these pieces. So all I'm going to do is align my pocket piece with this top circle here on the pattern and place this together with the right sides together. And then I can just pin this in place. Then I'll just go sew this down, serge this entire edge, and then go ahead and under stitch on this side. I'll show you in a little bit more detail when I do that, but that's going to make everything look really nice and neat. Then I'll just repeat the same process for all four panels. I'm gonna let the 
Okay, so to understitch the pocket, all I'm going to do is open the pocket piece out and then you'll be able to see the, let's see, maybe you'll be able to see it. The autofocus will work, there we go. And then when you open it out, you can see where the seam is here. And I'm just going to top stitch across this side. That's where the pocket side is, making sure that this seam allowance is turned in that direction. So it's like we're securing that seam allowance to the pocket piece, and that's going to allow it to fold in a little bit more neatly. And it just looks really nice. It's one of my favorite techniques. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. Fix my heart's been broken Take this weight off my shoulders Cause I know there's the day I'm coming back We're gonna let the past stay I'll move the sun to the ocean Let its unsaid words be spoken so now that that stitching is in place, it's just going to fold over a lot more naturally without any of that seam showing on the outside. So if you want your pockets to be as invisible as possible, this is a really good technique to use. Then you have secret pockets and that's kind of fun. <laughs> Okay, so now I can start assembling all of the panels. So I'm going to take these two panels with the pockets and place these with the right sides together. And then when I sew around this edge, that's what will create the pocket. So I'm just going to make sure everything is lined up. And then I will go ahead and pin the front panel and the back panel, as well as the other two sides, all together at the same time, and then just go sew all of my skirt seams. It'll just be a little bit easier and more efficient for me, but you could definitely break this down if that felt like a lot to do at once. So I'm just going to get pinning and then sew all of this together. So as I'm pinning this, I'm realizing I think I probably aligned these pockets in the wrong place, which is my total mistake. Um, this is what I get for not looking at the pattern guide, but I think this would have been aligned at the waistline here because of this. So when I go and sew this together, what I'm going to do is just use my serger to kind of go over the edge here so that this is more even, and I think that will work really well. So I have all of my panels assembled for the skirt now and the pockets are set in and I think they'll still work even though they're a little bit lower down on the skirt. I actually like that better personally. So everything is ready to go on the skirt. I just need to add gathering stitches to the top. And I think this is actually where I'm going to stop on this for today. I'm trying to work a little bit more on taking on less in one day of sewing. So I'm just going to stop with the skirt for now and then I'll be back tomorrow to work on the bodice. So 
I am back to working on this dress project and I think I'm going to start with the bodice front assembly today. I'm really excited to add some of the trim to this part of the dress, so let me show you what I'm thinking. So the bodice front has this midriff centerpiece here and then this top part is gathered to fit into the midriff piece. So what I'm thinking would be really pretty would be to add some of this trim between these two pieces. So I'm just going to play around with it for a minute. I'm trying to decide if it would be better facing down like this or facing up. Hmm. I'll have to think about it for a minute. I think I might also put it on the lower edge as well between the bodice and the skirt. So what I think I will do is go ahead and baste this facing down to the midriff piece and then once I sew these pieces together then I can turn this up towards the top like this. So I'm going to make sure that I baste this on around that 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance mark. That way I have the edge of the trim showing and I think that's going to be really pretty. So I'm just going to get these bodice pieces assembled and the trim added and we'll see how it goes. So here is how that trim looks. Once I fold the seam allowance back, I think it is so sweet. Okay, so here is how this is looking now. I love the trim. I think it's so pretty. So I think I am going to go ahead and add some top stitching just right here below this bust seam. I think it's going to look a little bit more, um, I don't know, just polished. So I think I'm going to add some top stitching, just going for the extra details on this project. My iron is being so noisy. <laughs> So here is where I am at currently. I have the lace added, the top stitching done, and I'm just playing around a little bit with the lace trim because I think that I want it to go all the way down the front of the dress so that it's like peeking out where the button placket is. I'm just trying to decide if I also think I want it to go around the neckline as well. So I'm not quite sure. I kind of like the look of that just peeking out of the neckline. I'm just not sure how much is too much, so I'm gonna try and decide. So I think while I'm making that decision, I'll go ahead and switch gears and work on the back. The back of the dress, you'll see in just a second, it's a yoke piece and then just the lower back piece. So I'm going to assemble that in the same way, adding the lace between the yoke and the lower back. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this same sort of process, just using the back pieces from the dress. Okay, so the back is assembled and I've gone ahead and pressed the lace down on this part because I like that the gathers here kind of mimic the gathers on the front. So it's almost like reversing the direction a little bit. So I think it keeps things cohesive. 
Now I haven't top stitched this yet because the way that the back neckline is finished is with a facing piece that's just the other half of the yoke. We have a random red thread. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and sew the shoulder seams um, of the front pieces to the back pieces. And then I will do all of my facings and run some top stitching right here. I just realized I forgot to put gathering stitches in the shoulders of the front pieces. So I'm going to do that really quickly so that this all fits together. California The sun is always shining right People are smiling, making plans Hiding behind their shades And you're doing the same No rain, no flowers Nothing's growing with your heart is fire But baby, I think you're cold without me Without me, I bet that you can get in the sweet in the bed lying Okay, I think I've decided to go ahead and try adding the lace all the way around the neckline. So what I've done with the neckline facing and the under yoke piece is I've gone ahead and sewed the front neckline facing pieces to the yoke. This way I can just add all of this to the neckline at one time and hopefully that keeps things really seamless while I'm adding the lace on. So it might be a little bit of an interesting process. We'll see how this goes, but hopefully everything works out really well. Nothing's growing with your heart is fire, but baby, I bet you so I just now realized that my camera had died while I was sewing the facing to the bodice. So unfortunately I missed most of that on recording, but I want to show you how it turned out because it was actually pretty simple to do and I'm really happy with it. So here is how it's looking so far. I love the little bit of lace just peeking out here on the neckline. I think it's really pretty. And then if I open this up, you can see how the yoke is attached. So I just attached all of the facing and yoke to the neckline with the right sides together on the outside and then under stitched and turned it all towards the inside and then once I did that it was really easy just to fold this edge under and fold this edge under and then top stitch all of that on the outside of the dress. So I think it worked really well and everything looks really clean. Um, I would have stopped and charged the battery, but I was just having too much fun and I didn't want to stop sewing. So this is where we're at right now. So I do have a few places to be this afternoon. So I'm going to take a little break here. And then tonight my goal is to do the side seams and attach the sleeves and maybe attach the skirt if I get a little bit of extra motivation. So we'll see how far I get tonight. And then tomorrow it will be all about the buttons and the buttonholes. Hey friends, voiceover Lauren from the future here to walk you through this portion of the video because apparently I did not narrate it at all. So uh, what I'm doing here is going ahead and assembling the sleeve. And the first thing I'm starting with is the cuff piece. Now one alteration I usually make to commercial sewing patterns is to make the cuff just a little bit smaller. I always find that the fit is not very customized. So you can see I just removed a little bit of width there. And then I'm going ahead and trimming my lace to fit this piece because I'm going to add the lace in the same way that I did to the bodice. Now I'm going to go ahead and pin my sleeve piece together with the right sides together along the side seam and then I'll just go ahead and sew this seam as well as go ahead and sew the lace to the cuff and then sew the side seam on the cuff. Also going to quickly add gathering stitches to the top of the sleeve. This is just right in the center of the sleeve to give it a little bit more shape. And 
then after serging my side seam, I'm going to add gathering stitches to the bottom of the sleeve as well. After pressing the side seams, I'm going to pull up the gathering stitches at the bottom of the sleeve and adjust this to fit to the cuff. And now I can go ahead and pin the cuff to the sleeve with the right sides together, matching up the side seams and adjusting the gathers to fit. Then I'll sew this in place with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then once the cuff is attached, this might be a little bit difficult to see here, but I'm going to turn under the raw edge of the cuff and then fold it in half so that this now folded over edge covers up the seam allowance on the inside. Then I can top stitch all the way around the cuff to secure everything in place. Now I'm ready to set the sleeve into the dress. And by the way, I had gone ahead and sewed the side seams on the dress previously to this. I don't think I showed that in the video, but I'm pulling those gathering stitches together and then pinning the sleeve into the armhole, just making sure that everything is nicely distributed and aligned. And then I can sew this seam with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now with the bodice assembled, I can go ahead and gather my skirt and pin the skirt to the bodice with the right sides together and stitch everything in place. Hey friends, let's do a update on this dress. So I was working on it quite a bit yesterday and I was able to get the sleeves attached and also the skirt. So it's looking much more like a dress now, which is exciting. And I'm really liking the way it's turning out so far. So last night I was trying it on and just trying to adjust the fit in the front 
with the overlap to get the neckline the way that I like it, as well as just the fit in the front. And I think what I want to do is create little button loops going down the front. I think that would look so cute. It might be a bit of extra work, but I think it'll be really pretty. So I'm going to try adding that. I'm also going to add the lace trim to the front as well. And then I have some little blue buttons I actually think I'm going to use on this. Originally, I was thinking I would do white or clear, but I have some blue ones that I think look really pretty. So I'm going to add all of that. And then I think I will start the buttons here on the corset part of the waist and then just do a little hook and eye here on the neckline to secure that so that it's not too low for my liking. And then all I have to do is the hem. So it's definitely coming along. I'm actually leaving on a trip to Florida tomorrow and I really would like to bring this with me. So I am going to try and finish it up today so that I can take it with me and hopefully get some cute pictures of it there but I'm really loving how it's turning out so far. So I'm going to get working on adding the button loops, buttons and lace to the front and we will see how it goes. So I'm really excited about it. It's been a really productive morning so far. I worked from a coffee shop this morning and now I am going to hopefully get this finished up. So hopefully I will have the finished dress to show you soon. Okay, so I've already turned this part of the dress here in the front under twice just to make a nice clean finish on the inside. And then I've made 15 of these little button loops just by making a little bit of bias tape and then folding that together and making a strip of fabric that I then folded and pressed into this shape here. And so what I'm going to do is add these to the front of the dress, but I think I am going to sandwich this lace in between. So start with this here at the top and then add the button loops underneath and then just top stitch all the way down. So that is kind of my plan and we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this here at the top so that it's secure and then just get pinning everything in place. So the button loops are all attached. I think it looks really cute. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and hem this and then all I'll have left to do is attach the buttons. So almost there, I'm excited. friends so it's actually been a couple of weeks since I finished this dress and I'm just now getting around to trying it on to show to you guys I finished it the night before I went to Florida so I just immediately packed it in my suitcase and took it with me but I really love how it turned out so let me show it to you so here is what the dress looks like now that it is all finished I love how it turned out I think it is so cute I love that it has pockets and I really love the fit of it as well. If I were to make this pattern again, the only thing that I would change is to raise this neckline just a little bit because it is quite a deep V. So for me, I just am wearing an Abercrombie bodysuit underneath this just in case it kind of flies open because that makes me a little bit more comfortable. But I think if I wanted to make it again, it would be ideal just to raise that about an inch for my personal taste. But I love the style of it. I really love the way the trim looks on the waist here and then also on the sleeves. And I think the buttons are really fun as well. And I love that it has pockets so I'm so excited to have this in my wardrobe for spring. All 
right friends, so that is going to be it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed watching the process of this dress coming together. I really enjoyed sewing this one and I'm excited to have it in my spring wardrobe. And I'm also really excited because I've just got some new fabric in the mail that I'm about to cut into. I'm actually about to immediately start filming my next video, which I can't wait to share with you very soon. Thank you so much for watching and spending your time here on my channel today. And I will talk to you in a new video very soon. Bye.